An organometallic coupling reagent is one that's going to couple a carbon group uh, covalently bonded to a metal center, uh, or an organoborane, as we'll see with the Suzuki, to a uh, alkyl halide in exchange for the halogen. So we're coupling two carbon groups and replacing a halogen, eliminating a metal species um, in the process. So these are our coupling reagent um, reagents that we're going to cover, organolithium, organomagnesium, organocuprates, boranes, and alkenes with the HEC reaction. So organolithium, Grignard, Gilman, Suzuki, and HEC. What are they? Uh, are the scope of the reagent here? So this is a big picture look to start with. What do they couple with? What alkyl halide types? And then finally, we're going to look at any interfering functional groups that we might have that will be unstable with each set of our reagents. So there's the big picture look. If you want to get those right away, let's go and have a few comments about each individual um, um, reagent here. So for our similar uh, types of reagents, organolithiums and Grignard reagents are going to be very similar in how we make the reagent, the scope of making the reagent. And so we're going to see here that for these, um, with alkyl um, type reagents, we're going to make primary, secondary, and tertiary with, with these three reagents. So for an organolithium, for example, if we wanted um, to make an isopropyl type reagent, we'd have lithium directly bonded, covalently bonded. Remember, they act like they are carbanions, like nucleophiles, um, and so they can approximately be thought of as their anionic counterpartner. Um, but really, it is still a covalent bond, but we can treat it like it's a nucleophile of that type. Okay, so again, the metal's lithium, and we're bonded there. Now, if it were a Grignard, say a primary Grignard reagent, uh, we might see ethyl magnesium bromide would look like this. We might also write it like this. Again, both are approximating carbon-type nucleophiles um, with those, so alkyl-type reagents. We can also use um, alkenyl-substituted reagents for these. Uh, like vinyl groups here, so a vinyl lithium or a um, looks like a propyl magnesium bromide here, or, or excuse me, a propenyl magnesium bromide that we'd have here. Again, the carbon group that we're attaching would approximate a nucleophile on an sp2 uh, carbon, so directly to that double bond as we've drawn it here. Uh, organolithiums and organomagnesiums also. Uh, bond to uh, arils and heteroarils, so we might see a phenyl lithium, or we might see a uh, substituted pyridine here, a halo substituted pyridine that would react with magnesium in ether to make a Grignard reagent out of this heteroaryl complex. So very wide scope on the reagents for these. So what can we couple with? with these reagents? Well, we can couple mainly to primary alkyl for organolithiums. Uh, most references I, I checked said that secondary and tertiary were, were very difficult reactions for coupling type reactions. So these primary halides like we see uh, right here. Alkenal, just no problem exactly as drawn. These halides uh, will not work, and arils and heteroarils will not work for the organolithiums directly. There are catalysts out there that we're not covering um, in class that are potential ways of getting these to work, um, but we're not going to cover those. And then with Grignard reagents, uh, one of the things that we saw um, is that primaries, yes, because of the SN2 type reactivity, we can get elimination reactions with secondary halides and tertiary halides. But uh, after doing some reading, more active Grignard coupling partners are needed. And so to get really good reactions, most of what I saw was benzylic, primary benzylic, or anything with an alpha donating group um, were the best coupling partners. So what that means is we might see something like this is a good coupling partner with a Grignard reaction, so um, this benzyl group, there's a CH2 here to make that a primary carbon, but primary benzylic uh, activating. Uh, primary allylics react, but we get a lot of rearrangement partners if we're not um, symmetrical there. So there are several things that go on, side reactions that make those non-ideal. And then electron donating group 
um, such as this species, we put an oxygen here, we can actually couple quite nicely um, to this position with this electron donating group next door. So we have to really activate those um, positions, those primary positions for uh, a good coupling with Grignard reagents. And then again, coupling to alkenyl and heteroaryl and aryl do not work with these two. So looking at um, organocuprates, uh, primary organocuprates are best. And so we might see something like an ethyl cuprate here. Um, steric hindrance prevents the secondary cuprates from forming. And so we won't see those. We might see alkenyl type cuprates. Again, two equivalents of halide reacting or, or, or lithium reagent reacts with copper iodide to make these. Again, another video discusses that. And then um, aryl, heteroaryl, no problem with the cuprate reagents. We can make those as uh, readily as we can with the Grignards and with the organolithium reagents. Uh, with the Suzuki, we make organoboranes and primary boranes from, al from terminal alkenes work just fine, and so we might see a propyl uh, borane here being a reagent that we can make. Uh, secondaries will not work, tertiaries will not work for alkyl substituents. Remember, we're here in the alkyl column here, and so those will uh, work only for primary. Now, with <clears throat> um, alkenyl, because of the way the borane adds, we'll see that only trans type um, boranes will form for the Suzuki reagent that we see here because we're using a borane addition to an alkyne to make the alkenyl. Different reaction makes aryl coupling um, reagents for the Suzuki, but we can do those. They form just fine. And so we'll see those um, be able to couple aryls to other coupling a, uh, reagents. Now, the heck reaction will work best for terminal alkenes, and so we'll see those reactions, um, reagents work very well with the palladium catalyst as drawn. However, alkyl and aryl and heteroaryl will not work very well, um, or will not work with the heck reaction as we are learning in class now. What can these three reagents couple to, the Gilman, the Suzuki, and the Heck? Well, the cuprates, remember we said they were of this form, they can couple to primary halides best. And so we'll see um, halides of this form, again, primary carbons, for the alkyl type substituents, um, as we're in the first column here. However, you will see some examples in our textbook of where secondary um, halides might couple, one example in particular, um, and, and these are reported, but they're generally reported with higher order mixed cuprates, and so with the standard Gilman, I'm kind of skeptical um, as to the yield in this reaction, but, but because they're there, we'll go with it as far as, um, as, far as an exam situation, but I would, if I were doing this in a real synthesis, I would look um, for higher order mixed cuprate as what I would want a, a reagent instead of a pure Gilman in this situation. We can al alkenyl, we couple just fine the alkyl halides of the alkenyl variety or the aryl and heteroaryl variety, so no problem there. With the Suzuki, we will not couple to alkyl halides because of competing um, elimination reactions that will occur with beta hydrogens um, in these alkyl substituents, and so we don't see this with the Suzuki, and the same thing will happen for the HEC. So we won't want to see those primary, secondary, or tertiary alkyls reacting with these two reagents in basic conditions. So uh, what do we see? We see great coupling to alkenyl, and we actually maintain the stereochemistry, whatever our, for all of these, if they're stereochemistry, whatever stereochemistry I have with my um, alkene, I, when I couple, I retain that stereochemistry in the product, noting that the Suzuki reagent itself, if it's alkenyl, will be trans, but when we couple, it'll maintain the stereochemistry about that um, position. 
And again, hetero, aerial, and aerial work just fine for the Suzuki and the heck as well. Um, and so we see the scope of our reaction. What can we couple together? What functional groups will interfere with these reagents? Well, let's look at a couple of rows that I've organized into rows here of interfering groups. And so the first row I've called row one, um, acidic groups. So things with pKa's less than 40. This is where carbon um, acids tend to hang out. The sp2s, the sp3s uh, are going to be um, pKa's greater than 40, so their conjugate bases are ridiculously strong. And so these groups that I've listed here are protic groups that have labile hydrogens that can pop off and interact with our um, reagents, our organometallic reagents that are sensitive to acidic conditions. In row two, we see here um, that we've got some carbonyls, we've got some CN triple bonds, NO double bonds, and so forth. So these pi bond acceptors with electronegative elements, these electrophilic addition groups, can undergo addition reactions such as this Grignard reaction that we see here where the nucleophile adds to the carbonyl um, instead of coupling to another reagent. So in row two we've got these groups that are um, addition partners with some of these organometallic reagents. So row one and row two, let's see what we're stable to and what we're not stable to. Organolithiums and organomagnesium uh, reagents, the Grignards, they are very polar. They have a very large degree of negative charge buildup. So they're going to be unstable to acidic groups and addition groups for lithiums and organomagnesiums. So we don't want to have any of those groups we saw in row one and row two present um, in the presence of alkyl halides um, when we're trying to couple with organolithium and organomagnesium. For cuprates, they are remarkably stable to both sets of groups. They're stable to the acidic groups because the copper to carbon bond isn't very polar and they're stable to the addition groups um, because the mechanistic pathway um, prefers the, the coupling to the halides, the substitution at the halide carbons. And so we're stable to both row one and row two. Organoboranes and, and uh, with the Suzuki and the heck, well we're in the presence of base in both of these so they're going to have moderate instability to the acidic functional groups. They could be deprotonated and potentially affect the reaction and slow the catalytic cycle due to those charge buildups that we would have from that proton transfer. Um, so the Suzuki and the heck, we don't want to have those acidic groups present, but we are stable to the addition groups for the Suzuki and the heck in the presence of our um, alkyl halides which we're coupling to. If the alkyl halides aren't there, all bets are off for some of these, but if they are present, we'll react with those first and couple before we react with the other um, groups that are present. Okay, so let's look at a few examples of what might happen. If there's a ketone present, for example, and we have a Grignard reagent, we are going to add to one, two, three, four, five carbons, and then plus one, two from the Grignard, leaving that bromide still in place. We're going to add to the carbonyl, and then that could actually potentially do an intramolecular SN2. We've created a good nucleophile. We've got a primary carbon. That's SN2 territory, and we end up with a one, two, three, four, five membered cyclic ether, a furan here, a, a tetrahydrofuran derivative, but at that second, at that first carbon we have, we've got an ethyl and we've got a methyl coming off in that position. And so we're unstable to that ketone functional group. But if we have a Suzuki, we are stable, and so we're going to couple our ethyl group on in place of the bromine, so one carbon, two carbon, then one, two, three, four, five, one carbon, two carbon, one, two, three, four, and five, leaving that ketone alone and coupling on our new um, two carbons here in place of the bromine. For acidic groups which are present, organolithium might react with a thiol to cause a deprotonation to occur. And so we might end up with an S minus, isoelectronic with an O minus. 
that halide still there. The proton transfer reactions fast. Again, we would get an intramolecular SN2, great nucleophile, great leaving group on a primary carbon, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing, but now we've got a sulfur in place uh, with a methyl group on the end here. The bromine's kicked off. But if we do this with a Gilman reagent, we are stable to the acidic functional group and we end up coupling on our vinyl group to the one, two, three, four, five carbons leaving the acidic functional group in place.